Woo, hello, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's everybody doing? Today we're going to do uh, another whip and jab. Well, working on Chuck Pinson's Diamond Art Clubs on Golden Shores by Chuck Pinson. There we go. Alright. A square, 29.1 inches by 21.6 inches, 74 centimeters by 55 centimeters. Uh, 48 colors and 3 ABs, 136, 129, and 141. Alright, how's everybody doing today? It's kind of that overcast, gloomy, gray kind of day, but the birds are still out. Like a whole bunch of starlings or something. It's just really weird. Okay, so kind of in the part of the picture where this is like the mast of a, a docked or anchored sailboat and there are a couple of boats background and yeah <laughs> after this yeah it's a house and then it's just basically another palm tree up here and then sky so we're getting there <laughs> all right uh 208 208 and that was a right facing arrow with right facing white arrow with a purple background all right so let's continue from there let's figure out where i am in this and we'll just hang out for an hour or so all good. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's to get my uh, diamond pen pen. I don't know. Rainy weather has always just made me feel blah. Like, yeah. To it, just double checking. Okay, right facing arrow. Alright, I just gotta figure out where I had been since uh, I last worked on this. Here we go. Yeah, like we're like right around here. Okay, so. Yep, yeah, okay, yeah, those colors. Very familiar. So, this is like part of the sky pretty much it's right above the water so it's just gonna be a few purples may just be working on this one color for the hour but we'll see how it goes now let's keep doing these whipping chats <laughs> so I'm not gonna run out of canvases anytime soon for sure. Yeah, I ran a couple errands in town earlier. And yeah, it's traffic's picked up considerably and it's just busy downtown where near where I live it's just holy cow <laughs> I'm one who like basically finds a parking spot and just like walks where I need to go like even if it's like a couple blocks so not really a fan of parallel parking to be honest I'm not even sure if I like could still parallel park Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was enough for me to just get used to uh, driving the forklift at work. Uh, I'd still have trouble maneuvering it sometimes, but yeah, I can take my time on that thing, but uh, 
being in traffic around here, you, yeah, people just get so impatient. Yeah, you can't really go a couple kilometers per hour to kind of correct anything you do wrong with driving. You kind of have to react. <laughs> Yeah, these colors are kind of... Purple is kind of everywhere. So I'll just get these... Oh, three arrows. Yeah, I just kind of see them, so it's just easier if I... Just... Yeah, put the drills on them. I watched an unboxing of a couple craftably canvases and it looks like they've totally changed how they package their products it's now like a travel tube like kind of a lavender purple colored branded travel tube it's like wow yeah when you get a diamond painting from craftably now you'd certainly get quite a decent package <laughs> so yeah yeah it's kind of like a telescoping travel case it's like a cylindrical telescoping travel case which means the uh, packaging is adjustable somewhat oh, pretty nice I think I don't know if I have anything from Craftably. Hmm, not sure. And pretty neat creative. I have a canvas from there, but that's about it. Yeah, it. Yeah, the unboxing was very thoroughly detailed. It was a couple of canvases, but... I think they were like pre-orders or something, so... From a particular artist, and it had been their first uh, time ever using that artist and first Craftably. It's like version 4 of the Craftably uh, kit, so... Yeah, quite an improvement in their uh, what they present on their kits or how they present their kits. So that's really good to see. They have the individual uh, sticker sheets now for their symbols as well. Originally, I thought it was just Diamond Art Club that started doing the uh, label, symbol label uh, schematic sheets, sticker sheets. So you can put uh, color numbers and symbols on uh, your storage containers. And I think she mentioned that the drills came, came in baggies, like uh, small Ziploc bags. So, yeah. Content cr creator was like, uh, oh, you could put these on the baggies that they supply. Yeah, so that's kind of got the idea. Yeah, I have a couple Treasure Studios Arts canvas, and they use baggies, uh, Ziploc bags, for their canvases. So. I'm good with that. If a kid has baggies with the drills, yeah, I just pour the drills into a, a tray yeah it's just with diamond air club or those uh individually packed drills and like a heat sealed kind of uh bags that you can't really reclose properly i go to storage containers just from the dollar store there so yeah that's the only time i go to storage but if there's like proper baggies it's a block bags. I'm good with that. So it's all good. Like I just basically get a roll of painter's tape and 
label my dollar store type storage containers and they have like two uh, tabs which uh, you pull them down like two plastic tabs and you just push them down and they click in the place to close yeah and they, they have a lid plastic lid yeah I'll just show <laughs> Yeah, I, I've shown them another. Yeah, I just got these from like the dollar store. So clip on the front, push them down, and then, yeah, lid. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, put the lid back on. Yeah, just kind of like plastic. It's just plastic and for the color, just label of painter tape. Now, for like uh, kits that are like, 150 colors like the diamond painting Dutchland first ever Josephine Wall Luna uh, I'm definitely gonna need more storage <laughs> definitely gonna need storage containers I think so I think those are uh, heat sealed uh, kind of bags that's okay yeah but I'm going to need more storage that's a given. Oh well, it's all good. Probably not gonna do that canvas for a while. That'd be a saga within itself for sure. Yeah, I'm kinda leery about doing two cats at once. I could. I wanted to, but I think I'd need to uh, get an entirely different set of storage containers to differentiate uh, the kit entirely and keep the drills totally separate. But I myself have always been uh, one canvas at a time just for that reason so I'm not mixing up drills like yeah if it was like a round and then a square that would be easy to tell but yeah just it's kind of like preventive preventing like a massive mess or mix up of drills if they ended up being the both squares or whatever. Yeah. Just kind of have a slight obsessive compulsive tendencies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit I do have OCD density. Yeah, tendencies. Yeah, like being neat and organized, know what's going on. And just me touching my diamond painting stuff. Like, I show my parents, mom and dad, and post uh, pictures on social media and all that, but I. Yeah, I'm basically touch my own diamond painting stuff. I'm uh, really kind of leery about uh, kind of letting uh, people touch my stuff. <laughs> my diamond painting stuff, anyway. Can look, but don't touch. <laughs> yeah. Just all the costs associated with No, oh, my parents have their own hobbies and I don't touch their stuff, so it's pretty much And yeah, they just look at the small square round drills and just go you're you're nuts and then walk away usually. But that's my brother too, so 
<laughs> yeah, I do have a pet cat named Axel, but since I'm in a totally other part of the house, which is separated by a man door, like just like a regular entryway door, yeah, the cat doesn't come out here, even though he does run out here on occasion, but he's not allowed out here in the studio. <laughs> Just, yeah, the cat fur thing, and then I can get cat fur on this canvas just by uh, transferring, transferring it from my clothing or just cat fur that flies around the air and ends up on the bottom of a pair of my socks or something, and yeah. Whether you have a cat or a dog, it's like hair just yeah travels is tracked throughout the house regardless or any surface. <laughs> the extra dirt, their pet dander, etc. Yeah, and we're by a highway and surrounded by fields, so. It gets like really dry then we have just that dry soil dirt kind of being stirred up by tractors and farm equipment and from dirty transport trucks and yeah dust just gets stirred up in the air and blows around in the wind and yeah so Dust really is a kind of a constant, you could say. Yeah, it's nothing that we're, we're just like resigned to it. <laughs> it's just going to happen here regardless. But that's okay. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Like, we clean like once a week. We run a robotic vacuum. You can eye robot vacuum or whatever it's called. Kind of collect the cat hair. It goes under the couch and all that. 20 times or so with how our vacuum uh, cooperates. I don't know. We end up va um, emptying the canister of the robot vacuum like two or three times while it's running in the house. Oh, and the cat is just like a hundred percent stressed out the whole time the <laughs> vacuum's run. He stopped it a couple times just by batting at it or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It's I also have like a regular vacuum that bring it into the studio to vacuum up our entryway uh, rug, like where we put our shoes and all that. We don't wear shoes in the house. We take them off. So somehow we end up with like pebbles in our in the entryway. The bottoms of my running shoes or something and then they fall out and you suddenly have like a pebble or something in the house yeah because we just have a gravel driveway for the most part <laughs> it gets uh, puddles in it still the ground just divots Get birds having baths in the driveway, gravel, <laughs> where the water kind of pools. I don't know, it'd be nice to just like pave the driveway kind of thing, but I've mentioned it a couple times to my mom and dad, but they just kind of go whatever. <laughs> nah. <laughs>
Oh, it's their house. I just live here. I just pay room and board. <laughs> I'll probably get the house one day, like inherited. But they pass on or something happens. But I'm in like no rush to like kick them out or anything. They're they're fine. <laughs> I live here, I work full time, continental, sleep when I need to, go to work when I need to, yeah, day shift, yeah, I'm on the day shift rotation for four weeks, 12 hour shifts, yeah, I have this weekend off, and then I work next weekend, yeah, la di da. Then I just transition back into the nights for another four weeks and back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> so, parents work around my schedule. If I'm not here for supper, I'm not here for supper. They still do their thing. I just basically come home at like 7 at night on my days, like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then at night, I just come home at like 7 a.m. the following day, get some sleep, and then usually go back into the work that night. <laughs> yeah. My opinion, nights are quieter. Uh, night shift is quieter. I still have to wear a radio, etc., but you don't have that constant radio chatter uh, in your ear all day. For when everybody else and their brothers in the factory. There you go. I just finished the last of my coffee. It was basically a cold brew coffee at this point. <laughs> Those cold brew coffees, and there's even like an alcoholic beverage that has black coffee in it, cold coffee, cold brew coffee in it. It's like whiskey or something with it. So it kind of puts like the Starbucks or Tim Hortons uh, cold brew coffee in the kitty section or at the kitty table. <laughs> Basically, if I tried that cold brew alcoholic whiskey beverage or whatever it is, yeah, I wouldn't be able to drive. So, don't drink and drive, people. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Mom's wondering if it would taste like a Irish cream coffee or something. How it would taste. And she really doesn't drink, but they're advertising... that drink, that adult beverage, <laughs> alcoholic beverage like nothing. Just as much as the Tim Hortons and Starbucks cold brew drink. Not to be like brand, <laughs> I'm just mentioning like the commercials we have up here in Canada. I'm sure Starbucks has Uh, cold brew commercials, cold brew coffee commercials on and constantly looping. We have Starbucks up here too. Just probably not physical, as many physical stores as there probably would be in the States. Getting booths, like Starbucks uh, booths or counter miniature stores, I guess, uh, in certain grocery stores, certain grocery store chains, like Loblaws, I guess, they have quite a family of uh, grocery stores and etc. So, Starbucks is in there, in uh, Stratford, near where I live, about 20 minutes away. And they're still in the bookstores, like Chapters, Indigo. Yeah. 
not to purposely name brands like you don't <laughs> yeah just just where starbucks is but i'm a tim hortons guy yet not sponsored or anything just mentioning where i go eh. <laughs> yeah mention brand names it's like ah oh, this is turning into a commercial <laughs> drink tim hortons coffee made 20 minutes fresh daily just for you <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, that'd be funny though yeah <laughs> this weapon shop is sponsored by <laughs> it's like oh no <laughs> commercialism no now nah, one day maybe but uh, no rush <laughs> all this time i paying for now It'd be cool to sponsor or have a sponsor but so you can like just insert it <laughs> anytime it's like hey this video is brought to you by <laughs> that's something i'd like use like every day or utilize a trusted brand and be fun something that actually has a benefit to people it's the only way i'd probably brand or have a sponsor but yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> think about that now <laughs> that's not the end of the world if uh really not sponsored by somebody yet oh there you go surrounded by advertising dailies uh... and yeah there's affiliates that our content creators here on YouTube and have discount codes for diamond painting kits and that's accessories. So yeah, they're affiliates, so give her. But they were chosen by the diamond painting companies. So. Yeah, by the sounds of it, Diamond, I got a, I received an email today about uh, no more free shipping to Canada for Diamond Air Club. I I really don't mind paying for shipping to get a canvas to me from any company, really. I'd pay customs fees for... I'd have to pay customs scenes for Dreamers designs, but if I, they warn you about customs fees... If it's imported into Canada, yeah. If it has to cross the border, yeah. <laughs> it's always that, oh, you may have to pay a customs fee, and I couldn't get the canvas if I uh, didn't pay the customs fee in the first place, so it's really not a... It's not really a shock. Sure, it's an extra cost, but... Yeah, it has to get here. <laughs> It's not like gasoline suddenly free, so I understand the logistics, but yeah. Yeah, when you've already paid, like, yeah, it could amount for, like, a high-end kit, and then on top of it, there's just suddenly, like, 30 extra dollars or something. It's like, uh, bugger, but yeah, it beats the package being sent back, and it's like, uh, what? <laughs> uh, we packed it and shipped it for you, so why the heck is it back at our facility? <laughs> um, excuse me? <laughs> you wasting our time? <laughs> yeah. I ordered it, so yeah, no. Pay the customs fee, import duty and taxes to get the package if I have to, so. You let me know, so I'm all good with it. <laughs> I don't know, it's postal service doesn't work for free either, so they gotta pay for their gas and their staff and stuff, so it's not like 
Ah, let's bump my drill tray again. Oh man, spilling purples today. Yep, color of the day to spill is purple. What was it, blue and green before? Yeah, today's color is purple. <laughs> Get Elmo on here to sponsor it. I can't do the Elmo voice, but that would be hilarious. <laughs> Today's Echo of Color episode is brought to you by the Spilling the Color Purple. <laughs> Spill your purple drills today. If you have them in your kit, go for it. I haven't really seen that spider sense the, from that me tipping the my diamond painting tray a couple whipping chats back, literally. I spent part of the whipping chat picking the drills up off the floor. While I was talking, <laughs> I'm doing that again now. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have, yeah, basically at the end of my uh, drills on this tray, I didn't have very many. But yeah, still, my hand literally bumped it, and it's like, yeah, lovely. Oh, <sighs> yeah, but I digress. Don't fret if you spill your tree of drills constantly. It seems to be like a almost nearly every time I do it. Oh, I got some on the adhesive too. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's just left and right. Uh, it's all good. Now, worst case, I get a, yeah, I get my tweezers. Take it off the, yeah, it happens. I just kind of laugh at this point. Oh, man. Right. Uh, at least did they fall on my chair that I'm sitting on. I can snag them again. Uh, yeah, but nightmare inducing. If it's a large amount of drills Ugh. oh okay I salvage them ah <laughs> uh, yeah okay so you're gonna spell drills today and spill any shade of purple so there you go there's your uh, whip and chat challenge for today <laughs> brought to you by echoes of color <laughs> Spill your drills today. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Don't encourage that. <laughs> Just become known to, like, jinx everybody that's diamond painting. Yep, spill your drills. Spill your drills. Yeah. <laughs> but Jeff, what color? What color today? You usually say a color. Oh, no. I don't know what to spill. Whole set. <laughs> Sploosh. All the floor right into a carpet. Yeah, just choose a color of carpet or just long. I don't know, shag carpet or something. It's just something that would just cause endless cringe or heavy breathing. <laughs> Nervousness, sweating, anxiety. It's because of uh, having to find the drills off the floor. Yep, deep breath and uh, just get the drills that you can. If you do spill, it just seems to be a part of uh, this craft, unfortunately. It, it seems. Uh, my hand just bumped it, and then, yeah, it just watched the drills just fall. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, it, it's probably not hilarious to, like, the person that's, like, actually physically spelling the drills if it's more than just, like, a 20 or so on your tray, 15 or so. Now, if it's like a whole container, 
yeah, or if your drills are stored, like all your drills are stored in one of these boats on in a storage shelf thing, yeah. Be like, uh, let's get a new set of drills, I think, at this point. <laughs> Oh, there's, yeah, there's a ton of V's in this sea of... Yeah, let's go up a bit. Yeah, this is basically sky I'm working on for a good chunk of this. Oh, well, nah, just do this in order of occurrence. Yeah, I just laugh if it's like a small amount of drills that I spill on this boat here. Yippee. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I did it again. Tee hee. And then, yeah. It's like a whole container. Yeah, and just slowly dying inside. It's like, ah, oh, I need this color. Not done the canvas yet. That That's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, if it's a substantial amount of drills, I, I stop laughing and I'm like, ooh, that really ugh. yikes <laughs> kind of doing the heavy breathing for the individual that uh, experiences that yeah, it's, yeah don't really laugh at that point yeah if it's a large amount of drills that deck out yeah yeah it's uh makes a huge difference right there big time yeah my mom usually watches a a certain uh, general hospital at two o'clock our time is when it's on broadcasted but it it's like a repeat today because something else took precedence I guess so Mom's like, no, nah, this isn't a new one. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, world event came up, so, yeah. Something court-related, I'm sure. But, yeah, I'll go into that on here. <laughs> I mentioned COVID on here, but, yeah, that's a kind of, yeah. Instantly relatable kind of issue. That's, yeah, everybody knows about, I'd hope, at this point. Mm. Yeah, and there's the residential school issue up here. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. That's all I'm saying about that. It's uh, just not a very happy part of uh, Canadian history. That's, that's happening up here now. Yeah, it, uh, probably look that one up. I really don't want to elaborate too much on that. It's a pretty difficult subject, even just uh, learning about it myself a couple months ago. Yep. Yeah. And my mom educated herself about it. it something that's happened up here in Canada. It's searchable if you want to know more about it, but I really don't want to elaborate too much about it. It's a really sensitive, difficult issue up here. But yeah, uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, yeah, no Canada geese and goslings. I'm sure they're just... Uh, yeah, they're not by the pond, so I'm sure they're just uh, nestled near their nesting area somewhere. Or at the other pond hanging out. But, yeah, no bird activity there. Yeah, not that the res residential school stuff isn't, like, important. It is. It's a dark part of our history, but, yeah. Just elaborating on that on here uh, the diamond painting channel is just a little mm, yikes
there's other stuff going on in the world too. As you know, I just kind of follow current events. Just kind of do the headline skim. Get a brief update of what's going on. Yeah, I think any country has dark point in history, but society has matured or changed for the better or has improved over the decades or centuries. Probably can't say everything is perfect in any part of the world, but as long as uh, some social issues are acknowledged at this point, that's an encouraging step, but in the end, a lot more could be done for any social issue here regardless, so... Which is understandable, but yeah. Yeah, we can't solve every single problem in a day, but making progress in strides, or at least acknowledging what happened in history, will be educational and informative in itself, and it's a start. Yeah, just uh, name your social issue and yeah, see where society is now at this point for said issue or even if it's on the radar. That sh could sound unfortunate for some issues. Probably not even acknowledged as much as some other uh, conflicts or parts of history. Yep. And would the actual truth about historical events uh, be able to surface in a responsible, accurate way is a whole other issue as well for anything really yeah it's just yeah there's difficult issues to, to traverse yeah in every walk of life but acknowledgement and some sort of understanding or knowledge uh, will help considerably and it's a start to fix or address certain issues. We can't change the past. Yeah, society has changed in various ways, but yeah. I don't think you can really erase the past either, which some is some people may want to do for any historical event yeah and that just makes it worse because there's usually a group of people who have aged or survived such conflicts and yeah They've had to endure memories of 
their past ever since it happened. But yes, that's uh, the world wars, any human tragedy, conflict. There's always, or has been, or had been, a few, a small group of survivors that have an account of their experience during those difficult times in their life. Yeah, what our ancestors had to endure or experience before our generations came along is, yeah, probably a lot more drastic or seemed, or probably was a lot worse because of uh, the way society was back then. Like, advancements in medical technology, technology in general, basically headed for, if not in a digital age, they probably had to do a lot of stuff manually, uh, safety standards probably weren't there as much as they are now, I don't know how uh, safety standard, what safety standards are like in the states or anything really. Up here in Canada, yeah, we have yeah, a few different safety standards, food safety, uh, work safety, food safety, did I already say food safety? Yeah, border security, yeah. Yeah, we've learned from what our ancestors did and have either advanced or made something worse. <laughs> yeah, certain events in history worse than uh, they were back then. So. What may seem like an innovation at the time, like the combustion engine, for example, has, yeah, created an environmental problem and even a ocean pollution problem, fossil fuels and our need for them and yeah, population booms. Yeah. So, having a new handy technology, something innovative, useful, keeps the world running 24 7, 365, regardless of where you are on the planet. There are good things and bad things. Something that was innovative back then is now detrimental, yet we use it anyway. Yeah, can name like anything, really. But basically our smartphones are pretty major component, if not almost a standard component in everyday life now. Or tablets. At, the irony is I'm using a smartphone right now to film this. So, like, what can't you do on a smartphone at this point? And I've probably loosely mentioned that... Yeah. Loosely mentioned about technology and its kind of future detrimental damage. Yeah. 
over time. Our dependency on it, I think, is what I elaborated on a few whip and chats back. Nothing too hardcore, but... Yeah, kind of learn about the implications of... Or the effects of technology on anybody over a sustained period of time. Well, look at education uh, due to COVID, uh, online learning up here in Canada. Like, even kindergarten kids had to sit in front of a computer screen or on their tablet or whatever on the internet in general to learn <laughs> for the school year. I there I think there is an option just to stay with online learning for even the next in September when we have uh, school starts back up around here. Basically summer holidays now, graduation for grade twelves, yeah, high school. Yeah, kindergarten graduations as well. Like going to grade one. Uh, it's an advancement through education, so it it has merit. Yeah, I got my grade twelve high school diploma, and that's basically as far as I got education wise. I just worked right after high school, literally. <laughs> I just worked in the food industry, and still am ever since so uh... it's like 17 years ago i finished high school so yeah finished grade 12 yeah i never did the college thing I was kind of encouraged to, but that never came to fr fruition. Like, I never sent any applications in for college or whatever. Like, it, yeah, and it kind of felt like I was pressured to in high school. It's like, oh, okay, sign up for college or university. And I, be lucky if I got into a college thing. I wasn't like I was good in some subjects in school high school or throughout my education but math definitely wasn't one of them I was exempt from French it's basically our second language up here in Canada ESL Well, well, not ESL in my English as a second language. No, not for me, but uh, immigrants coming in. ESL is definitely commonplace. It's all good. It, you get, yeah, coming to the country legally, properly. Can still speak, uh, your native language, your original spoken language, and have English as a second language. As long as you try to communicate in English, you're, you could probably be set to go up here. I'd like that, and I'd rather have it that way but that's up to the immigrant and uh depends what uh individuals coming into the country uh are doing like i uh, think if you're immigrating you either have to have existing family that in the country or be working or be coming in for a job like to work 
I don't know if it's like that in the States, like you have to have like a reason or a formal reason to immigrate to the States or Canada. But I think in Canada you can come via visa, like a work visa. But yeah, you'd probably eventually have to get citizenship or leave the country after your visa expires or you could renew your visa. I haven't really left Canada. Like, I don't have a passport, so... Don't know too much about that stuff, but... Have a iffy general idea about uh, immigration to and from Canada. But, yeah, there's an opposite word to that. Immigration. Emigration or something. Leaving Canada. Yeah. Export would be the word for, like, goods and services, but... Emigration? Emigration is coming in. Oh, I'm not sure what that's... I'm not sure, but yeah, as usual, I just go like everywhere in these whipping chats, just uh, just chat about random issues, not in graphic scope, like yeah, just kind of casually mention some things. <laughs> Yeah, definitely don't want to delve into very sensitive issues for sure, but I casually mention issues headline style, very uh, summarized kind of way. Yeah, because... There's... Yeah, a lot going on in the world, and yeah, we're all receptive or sensitive to those certain events, for sure. Yeah, even some stuff bothers me that I hear about. It's just, yeah. But it's present. It's what's happening in the world, and yeah. There are ways to uh, take a break from everyday world chaos, but yeah, it's, it's still there, but yeah. There are ways to just kind of mute it for a spell. Which is a healthy thing to do, so. Yeah, I'm all for diversity. Canada's a country of diversity. So is the United States. Yeah, diversity. It's great. <laughs> I'm just one in the boat that on the side of the fence were welcome to Canada, but could you, when you come to work, uh, could you just try to learn a bit of English? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just the basics. Like, just have that little bit of effort to learn our language. All that, that's really all I'm kind of iffy about, but yeah, really don't want to discriminate anybody, and nobody deserves that kind of treatment, just, yeah, you're moving to an English slash French speaking country, so keep your traditions, and yeah, your native tongue, your your commonly spoken language, 
That's fine. Excellent. That's welcome here in Canada. That's fine. But yeah, just try to learn a bit of English just so it's easier <laughs> when you're generally communicating. But yeah, that's totally, that's up to the individuals. I can't force anybody to become fluent in English, but yeah, if you're immigrating to a commonly English-speaking country, it helps to be bilingual. But yeah, I can't. say, oh, you have to, when you come to Canada, you have to speak English. But, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't say that. That's not fair. But I digress. That's about our hour together, so. <laughs> You've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Uh, in the description below, I will put my Facebook profile name how to spell my first and last name really uh just my personal facebook uh just yeah just because uh <laughs> my echoes of color facebook business page just updates regarding the echoes of color channel here on youtube just progress photos yeah meditation quotes oh that's for my instagram I also put my Instagram down there. It's just update material, but yeah. Yeah, these whipping shots are just neutral. Just hang out for an hour. Yeah, just easy going. <laughs> yeah, I try to keep it light. <laughs> yeah, I do mention uh, steep stuff sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourselves and uh, see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>